All right, so now let's talk about the programming process. So the first step in the programming process is that first you're going to clearly define what the program is doing. And so in our example code, we were figuring out what the what the user's pay was. So that's that's what the program does. Like we're going to calculate the user's pay. Depending on what your program's doing, it's probably going to be different. So you just need to clearly define what your program is doing. And I would almost write it down just so it's really clear. Like you don't want to one mistake a lot of programmers make is they sit down in front of the computer, open up a blank text editor, and start trying to write code with only a really general idea of what their program's going to do. And that makes writing your code, writing your code is going to take a lot longer if you're doing that because you're going to make a lot of errors. You're going to have a lot of logic errors. You're going to have to rewrite things as you kind of define your problem better. Or you might not even know what you're supposed to do, and that can make it really hard to write code. So clearly define what your program is going to do. And then step two, visualize the program running on the computer. So this is, I, I imagine this as like having the user in mind. So for instance, with this program where we calculate the pay, think about the user's experience. Like they're going to sit down and run your program, and the program's going to ask them for their hours and their rate, and then it's going to calculate the pay and display it to them. So think about what the user is going to see when they're running your program. Like how, how easy is it going to be to use? How obvious is it going to be? Like does the user know how that they're supposed to be entering their hours? Do they know that they're supposed to be entering their rate? Like we've all used programs that have really poor user interfaces. So just think about that as you're writing your code and and if anything, you want to make it simpler than you think it should be because you want it to be really easy for the user. And also visualizing it running on the computer helps you decide what you actually need for the program. So what data do you need? How are you going to output things? Stuff like that. And then you're going to use some design tools. So this, so this could be like a hierarchy chart, flow charts, pseudocode. And you're going to create a model for your program. So I kind of use a mixture of things for this. I really like to write pseudocode. And what I mean by this is I'll open up, after I've clearly defined my program, I've visualized it, so I kind of know what I want it to do, I'll open up a, an editor and I'll start just putting in some comments. So for instance, with this program where you're calculating, we're calculating the user's pay. I know that I need to get the I know that I need to get the rate and the hours from the user. So I'll just put in a comment, get rate and hours. And then I know that I need to calculate the pay, so I might put another comment, calculate pay. And I'll probably even put the equation in the comments, so pay equals rate times hours. So then, so and then output pay. So I like to kind of do a series of comments. And then when I go to actually write the code, it's almost like just filling in the blanks. So I have like my kind of pseudo code and then I just fill in the actual code with the correct syntax and whatever else. And this is one thing that can help you switch between different languages. So like, all, no matter what language you're using, all programs are going to follow, well, at least like if we're calculating the pay, you're going to use the same basic steps in any language. And so once you kind of get your pseudocode, it's just a matter of putting in the actual code. Um, I'll also use like hierarchy charts or flow charts, especially for more complicated programs. If you're really visual, you might want to always use these charts just to really visualize what's going on. So for instance, with this, a chart might be like, so we have our rate and we have our hours, and then we know that we're going to 
calculate the pay, and then we're going to have some output. So this could be an example of what what your um, flow chart looks like, just describing what the code does. So after you do all that, then you're going to check for logic errors. And we're going to talk about the different types of errors in the next video, but logic errors are basically errors that cause your program to produce the wrong results. So for example, if we're calculating the user's pay wrong, like let's say we have the wrong formula in there, that's going to calculate the wrong pay. So that would be an example of a logic error because we're our program is going to compile and run with no problem. It's just going to calculate the wrong result. And so you can imagine that would that's a big problem, but logic errors can also be really hard to find. So as much as possible, you want to make sure that you avoid them. And so that's why before you actually type your code, check your model, double check your um, flow chart, just make sure there's not something obvious that there's a logic error. Then you're going to type the code, save it, and compile it. And when you compile it, if you have any compilation errors, so now I'm at step six, if you have any compilation errors, then you're going to go find those errors, fix them, and then you're going to go back up and type the code again, save it, and compile it. And when you're So no programmer types code without getting compilation errors. So don't stress about compilation errors, just fix them and move on. And one hint that I want to give you, if you do get a, so let's say you run your code, or so you're sorry, you compile your code, you get a compilation error. You can copy and paste that compilation error into Google, and you're likely going to get something like a thread from Stack Overflow or maybe some other site. and someone else is going to have had that error and they're going to have asked and other people are going to have commented and told them how to fix the error. So if you copy and paste your error into Google, 99.9% .9 of the time you're going to be able to figure out pretty quickly what caused it and how to fix it just based on um, someone else asking about that error. You, you are going to have, you're, like you're going to always end up with some compilation errors. So just don't stress about them. Don't think you're a bad programmer because you're getting a compilation error. Just fix it and then um, save your code and recompile it. All right, and then the next step is run the program with test data for input. So what I mean by this is if we, like let's say that we put in zero for the rate. We know that zero times anything is zero. So if we put in zero for the rate, we know that we should get zero for the pay. So if you put in zero for the rate and you don't get zero for the pay, you know that there's something wrong. So you're going to have to go back and check your model and figure out what what's causing the problem. And checking for test data is checking with test data is really important because you need to make sure that your program is working for data that you know what the output should be. Because if like if you if you're running it with data that you don't know what the output should be, you're not going to know if that if it's outputting the right result if you haven't thoroughly tested it already with data that you know what the correct output should be. So then after you do that, you're going to correct any errors, and then you're going to um, go back up, and you're going to have to fix your errors, save it, compile it, and then just go through this process again until your program's running and it seems to be working well with test data. And then last, you're going to want to validate the results of your program.